through Coast. Gonna adapt some new bands as when well. Oriana and now Lulu added to the mix. And of course, they get first pick, so we'll see just what seals you want to remove. Actually, wow, mm. a lot of support picks removed away by Coast. A lot of heals and shields. They're gonna try and control CLG as best they can, but that just leaves up tons of stuff. Obviously, with the Jax band, they were respecting the power of Jax. I expect a lot more Jax bands, maybe even throughout the re duration of these LCS playoffs. Very surprised to actually see the block as opposed to Nidalee for mm. that first pick. I I feel like it makes sense in this context, mm -hmm. where like I think in the general scale, like if you're on equal footing, Nidalee makes more sense. She'll do more for a team. But I feel like Coast right now needs Shifter to win his lane again and do something with that lane lead. I think LeBlanc yeah. roams are generally more impact than the Nidalee roams, so mm -hmm. I think it makes sense in this matchup. Of course, CLG now get their choices once again. First rotation or you know first couple of picks. Uh, Lucian comes through for double lift. Lee Sin now, interesting. The Lee Sin pick is very smart here by COG. Not only has Dexter succeeded on Lee Sin in big moments, but it blocks one of Coast's better team compositions, which would, which would be LeBlanc in the mid lane and actually Lee Sin in the top lane. Yeah. Who's on Spartan. It would be their highly mobile solo lane carry comp. They can't do it now because Lee Sin's been taken away by COG. So now the question is, what does Coast fall back to? Jax removed, Lee Sin removed. He did rise last time, but even though he won the lane, I, I think Shifter, or um, sorry, Quickshot said it. He was like, yeah, well, he's not really on like a playmaker there, right? He's just farming and waiting to scale late game. I actually heavily dislike double AP compositions with LeBlanc. Mm. Because LeBlanc alone forces people to build heavy magic resist to not get destroyed, and it just cuts into the other guy's sustained damage. You should have... If you're gonna run double AP, I feel like they should both have sustained damage or both have incredible amounts of poke. LeBlanc and Rise don't mix very well. Okay, well, we'll see if uh, Coast fall into this kind of situation with this one. It's gonna be support Karma down to the bottom lane for Daydream, and Nintendo is gonna get Nocturne for himself. Jumping on that bandwagon really quickly. CLG, I'd be a little bit surprised to see TF just because I feel like it's a bad matchup. But we've seen Twisted Fate like one or two times a day yeah. over the last couple of weeks or so. He's come back. It's an incredibly difficult matchup if he picks Twisted Fate into it. And that's what the Nidalee is for. CLG's composition is shaping up to be one of these... I don't have a name for it yet because I don't necessarily feel like it's a poke comp per se. Okay. But it's more about a team composition that wants to fight you without you having the opportunity to fight back. Mm. They move around the map. They are highly mobile and they find kills and damage when they can, and generally just try and make it so you can never engage upon them. That's what COD's going for here with the Nidalee and Thresh. And we'll see what the last pick ends up being. Coast look for a new carry top laner with Aurelia on this one. So a far cry from Rise, but heck, yeah. you remove the, if you remove the Jax, you remove the Lee Sin, Aurelia will come through with this one. So it's gonna be Trundle top lane and match up against that. So Aurelia Trundle top lane. I feel like it's actually okay for Aurelia, but we'll yeah. see what pans out. This team composition makes a lot more sense for Coast than it did in the previous game. Nocturne and Aurelia can dive in together. Nintendo decks should theoretically be able to get the transform fairly quickly. Uh, the only thing that didn't work for them last game that they really went back to is the Ezreal. So we'll really have to see if Wiz Fusion can do better or if they can force lane swaps. Uh, much better this time around, but I still... You have to remember how badly CLG beat them. Yeah, I think this has a better recipe for success in that the way Coast lost their lane last time was they kept getting poked at, they kept getting pushed on, and they were down to their turret, and Thresh doesn't help that. Whereas if you got Karma, you can maybe shove back, but of course this now opens up Afro move for clutch hooks, for plays, maybe earlier picks and earlier kills. Have to see how that one pans out. Yeah, this time they still have a fair amount of shields and heals on CLG. Three summoner heals once again. They didn't necessarily even need those to come into play last game because they controlled yeah. the map so well. And a lot of the early game in this one will be how well Dexter can shut down or pressure the lanes as opposed to Nintendo decks because the matchup very much now is Lee Sin. The roles are completely reversed. Yeah. Lee Sin needs the early pressure and Nocturne wants the farm. Exactly. So we'll see now how this is going to pan out there. It's like, okay, well, Nintendo, if your ganks aren't working, can you become the carry threat, right? Like, yeah. It worked for Dexter to sit in his jungle, wait till six, and just force something every two to three minutes. And that was fine. Dexter was massive that game. He had a very big force in, you know, he was one of the big reasons CLG won. If that's what it takes, I mean, keep in mind, actually, I want to point out, Nintendo's like top 25 in solo queue. Like, yeah. I know he has a, a pretty bad sort of set of stats here in the LCS, but on an individual play level, Nintendo's ludicrously good. So I want to see if a different style, say, you know, I'll be a carry too if that works. That's a new look for Coach and that one pans out.
Oftentimes, it's all about the teamwork, where Coast has been falling short time and time again this year. Remember, CLG in 2013 lost both of their quarterfinal playoff series, but this is a new team, new play styles, and the game constantly changes. CLG has improved massively. They are now one win away from a semi-final clash with TSM tomorrow. And a top four finish, which will be pretty good for these guys, at the very least. Of course, trip to the All-Star still on the line if you win the entire thing. If you win the grand final the next day after. Link right now, very similar situation there. Counter-Logic Gaming, waiting around at the end in the tri brush. That's, it's the exact same posture, too. They're all waiting in different wings of it. This is actually a game where CLG would prefer to 2v1. I've talked to Aframu a lot about support matchups, and he is adamant about Karma beating up on Thresh early on in the game. You just stare a hook in the face and shoot a Mantrid Q at Thresh, and you'll win the trade with Karma. Yeah. So Aframu and CLG might look to get lane swaps, but in the way they manipulated the lanes last game, it shouldn't be a huge problem. Yeah, I do want to see what this pans out to be. Like, I always want to do kind of the mental math on like who's the fast pusher here, who's gonna who's gonna get more damage output, and like you have the edge a little bit by having like spell thief karma, you'll do more damage than the thresh will in general. But the Lucian will push a little bit faster than the Ezreal. Absolutely, because of his double shot. Yeah, I feel like Ezreal has to. I'm wondering like how much essence flux keys into that for Wiz Fusion, like if he can keep the attack speed going high enough. But it would it would heavily depend on how many people they decide to push with. Yeah. And if Nintendo or if he even skills lane. it up, because you're true. level two, and do you really want to go in without a Mystic Shot or a dash? That's absolutely true. We'll see what happens with this one. Looks like the blue buff can be started up by Coast. Nintendo going to get that one fairly safely. No ward coverage for him, actually, but he's secure with this one. Dexter going to grab his own, uh, or sorry, steal away the blue buff. Nian actually already starting the white camp. So, kind of Legend Gaming happy to keep their entire team on this side of the map and then collapse in. And one of the most important things here for COG with this counter jungling is that Dexter leaves small minions around because that will directly impact Nintendo Dex's ability to get Barrel Flare. It's not so much about the experience denial, even though it's nice. The bigger goal is actually to stop from stacking up a Barrel Flare. So here we go. Seal Jack's going to push to the top lane rather early. The next wave coming in on this one, and it's going to not even be the cannon minion wave. So they push on wave number two in the turrets under fire. Yeah, they're rushing this as quickly as possible. How many times have they scrimmed in practice this is there are four man pushes in both waves. Remember this turret that Coast is pushing should theoretically fall faster than the one CLG is pushing, but CLG started first. Well, there we go, down to half HP. It is the essence plucked here for Ezra, not picking up an escape for now. CLG does get the turret number one. Dexter getting rid of the cannon minion, the wave they're coming through. Coast off to a much slower start on this one. Can they make the headway in time right there? Still They're pretty even with each other, though, especially with the Essence Flux and the way the minion waves are lining up right now. It's most likely going to be a two-turret trade for both of these guys. The question will then be, how do they rotate afterwards? That's where CLG usually gains their edges against teams. We'll see if Coast has some up their sleeve here. Right, here we go, the push now. It's tier two turret under fire for both these guys. The mid lane mashup, actually a lead for Shifter. We haven't watched it much, but that is actually working well in Coast's favor. The gold rather equal. Tier two turret's definitely going down. And the recall here for Nian. In full vision, mm -hmm. Coast knows that he's defending. Actually, same situation for Coast. They're going to back off. Yeah. So the two turret trade in Wiz Fusion, going to deny the waves, let them die to the turret, and then pick up the local gold. Very even turret pushing for both. AD carries actually managed to pick up. Still decent CS numbers. They were last hitting things. A little bit more CS denied there by Coast. Yeah. And they're isolating the gold down onto Wiz Fusion, which is pretty nice. Get that last hit in. Good amount of local gold. Yeah, so let, let's actually pay this off real quick. Check the top laner's farm right here to see how much that freeze and denial works. Science Spartan at 9, Nian at 5 right here, and you're going to see those waves finally got cleared out. So it meant a few minions, 17 to 16 among the 80 carries, the support CS. A lot of that's due to Targons. There's a couple stacks quicker to Aphromu in this one. And here we go. Just a small, tiny 100 gold lead for Coast based on their choice of how to freeze the lanes up. Shifter being pressured here by Aphromu. He's spending plenty of time in this one. It's actually a double lift chilling alongside Nian because all of CLG are going for Dragon. Yeah, they're just continuing the buddy system right here. Uh, dragon this early Maybe is not. actually okay. fairly contestable. The yeah, shared five, CS <laughs> means that they're just continuing their turret push. Hmm. They see that Zion Spartan is freezing temporarily, and now they're looking to mob down the wave. This is, again, heavily because of the team composition Coast has picked. Nocturne 
doesn't have time to farm camps when all these lane swaps are happening. That's why it was so beneficial for CLG in game one that they got standard lanes. Nintendo cannot stack up large monster kills in this scenario. Well, Nian taking massive damage on the 4v3 has to flag, but the fear still comes through. Will it be enough? Nintendo forced to run back in this one. Aphromoo takes one of the queues. It's going to be the wave right in front of the turret, but Coast does hold the push. Yeah, they actually might go in for a little bit more on Nian. He's got to be careful. He's actually had something disastrous happen during a maneuver like this when CLG lost a game to, I believe it was TSM, where he spent too much time in the bottom lane, got heavily behind on farm, and then obliterated in the 1v1 matchup when he did finally go back to his lane. He might be fairly far behind Zion Spartan after that little maneuver. No, he does have the teleport, used it to get back to the top lane, so Nian down 15 minions, has two Doran's Blades, and that wave's gonna stop right in front of his turret. Nian is gonna have a freeze unless someone stops this. Nian made it up at just the right time, as long as he doesn't get harassed down too far with that giant wave of the turret, because death here would be the worst case scenario. And absolutely would be. Zion Spartan level five is gonna get a bit of a roam here. Shifter making the way up towards the top. Will walk by Dexter on the way though, right through a pink ward. Level six LeBlanc. Does Nian have to forfeit this? Dexter immediately runs up, try to help. Nintendo though, also trying to make it a 3v3 or a 3v2. Yeah, they just want to deny Nien this farm because it would give Zion Spartan a lead, which is why Dexter is here immediately. He had to run right up there. Thank goodness for that pink ward by CLG or Nien would be in a whole lot of pain. He still may be though. Coast almost gonna try anyway. Stun goes in towards Dexter. Big burst! Oh. Wow! Shifter one-shot the guy! Nien at have Link to hold up, but... Wow! <laughs> Yeah, that was a lot fusion. of damage. Fight bottom. All right, they're going to run. There's the hook. Flash by both of them. No summoners now for Coast bottom lane. Yeah, just the one heal being burned by CLG. But wow, feel like CLG's still recovering from that shifter shock in the top lane. How did they get all that damage out? Two, Q, two in Q, two in W. So he's a little bit more burst damage than that one. But mm -hmm. just a couple of Doran's rings and he goes for it. Yeah, and it was a very squishy Dexter, obviously, with the Spirit Stone at the moment. Uh, and they also probably expected the focus to be down on Dinyen because that's who they went up there to protect. Mm -hmm. Yikes. Well, CLG though with a bit of coverage now in the bottom lane. Aphromu, Doublelift, both level six, or sorry, five. Dexter only four right now. Nintendude is already level six. So Coast, mm. they're winning the experience game. They're up exactly first blood gold in global XP. So minions are pretty much a wash in this one. Madrid's Razor already done. Zion now, just killing off some minions. But now it's the potential freeze for Coast right in front of Zion's turret. No, wait, no, there's no turrets. Just kidding. Right in front of where his turret would be. That's the one. <laughs> I was like, why is the turret shooting? It should be so far down by this point. It's like, right, it's dead. Much better start for Coast, all told. Yeah. The kill is on to the person that is best for the kill. But mainly, even though their bottom lane is losing, it's not nearly as bad and the overall gold is very comparable. The thing they do have to worry about, though, is nine, eight and a half minutes in, there's only eight Feral Flare stacks uh, on Nintendo decks. He's going to have a very long power spike. Plus, even though it's not a bad thing to have vision control, Nocturne really needs to hit that Blade of the Ruin King, and he's put a lot of early money into those wards, which is going to delay his items. It is, absolutely, but he has the Riggles right now. 840 in, there's the ulti in off towards Aphromoo. The Fear Tether going to be landing as well, puts the damage through, and that's going to be a kill picked up for Nintendo. But Dexter is there for the counterattack. Big damage comes through, Teleport comes in. That's going to be Zion Spartan forcing the team away. Cancels Whoop. it, though. Oh my god, gigantic Javelin. Wow, so close to getting a kill there, but Coast returns yet another one. This time on Nintendo, so that kill will make up for that war gold he had spent. What is COG going to do off that one? They're still trying to take objectives on top of wards here. Knowing that Nintendo is extremely low, so there's no smite threat. Is a smart call by COG to go. Shifter could try. Not going to. Dragon picked up successfully Counter Logic Gaming. Only now down 700 gold. Good call with these guys. They lost a champion and still managed to come out ahead. That's, to me, always the mark of a great team. Less champions on the map, but you know that you're in a better situation. Get that teamwork mentality working strong. Yen still roaming around a lot. His lane's getting frozen frequently. Could be a four-man turret push after all is said and done because they've gotten a fight. But I think that was really just to set up the turret push. Yeah. Level seven there for Nintendo. He could show up if he wanted to, but Neon after and Co. pushing in nicely. Great. A pillar comes down. Not good for Daydream. He will die underneath the turret. CLG picking up their first kill of the game. Yeah. 
Now within 500 gold, they got control. There's a reason that when four people are in a lane early on in the game, people abort the turret. That doesn't change just because we're 10 minutes into the game. Coast should not have stuck around when there are four people pushing there for CLG, and it cost them a kill. Oh, Shift looking for some damage back on the link. Not going to mean too much, though. There we go. Turret picked up. Counter Logic Gaming now winning in gold for the first time now. Team Murphy said it was the important fact for them, and it is the great rotation. Meanwhile, Zion is just still sitting in the top lane. He is farming while CLG is pushing. I do want to see how that continues to pan out. Zion will be the X Factor, but when he does teleport down, he has to be able to get kills. Otherwise, he will not snowball this game on Aurelia. CLG still rotating strong as a team and going for more turrets. If they get all those turrets down, the map control might be too much. We go mid lane with five, some quick wave clear. Another javelin on a Nintendo dude. He's got to be careful, and I know you kept talking about the fact that Dexter was counter jungling early game, taking camps away. We still got a while to go for Nintendo. Hook's gonna land though. This is not good for Nocturne. Thankfully for him, the play doesn't land. That would have been the kill if it did. He has to back off now. Once again, CLG get the poke on the jungler, the poke on a shifter. And the siege continues. Nope, just kidding. Gold Backing even. Off. They did have to back off. They got a little bit low despite landing a few spears, and <laughs> those spears if they keep landing. Yeah. They're going to be trouble. Good early signs by Link that he's able to land so many of these. Uh, he didn't have a blue buff, though, so that this siege has a timestamp on it. And right now, just with the chalice, Link is just killing away the minions, keeping control of his lanes. The teleport comes in for Nian right as Zion pushes Ooh, all the way up. He might be in trouble here. Here comes with the block. I see if it's going to be enough. The slow comes down. Big burst. Nian very low kill picked up. Daydreaman secures it for the team. It's going to be some pressure on the turret. Dexter and Afro are there to defend. Looks like that won't be enough. Turret goes over to Coast. Nice move there by Coast. The expected rotation to the top lane. Knowing that CLG values their own turrets so heavily, they knew that that teleport would be burned in the top lane. But now they go mid. Let's see how CLG protects this one. There we go. Nocturnal goes in, goes for Afro, and tries to dip out. He's going to be safe with Fusion, though. Has to get away. The Flay doing good things. Summoner heal the Flash as well. This fusion survives, the team gets out. This is really just all about extended turret pushing. There's a giant wave in the top lane. Zion out of mana, and Yen has to hold that one. But the rest of CLG is down the mid lane where they just made people back and burned a Nocturne ult. So not only do they have the numbers advantage, the threat of an engage by Coast is greatly diminished. And there's a hook on a shift. He's going to wave through, though. Keeps himself alive. Wiz Fusion's ultimate is available. So he can help to wave clear a little bit there. And of course, the top lane was held successfully. Zion Spartan recalls, though, has Phage and Sheen. The power spike is almost there for the Coast top laner. 1,200 gold lead right now for Team Coast. Dodging uh, Javelin's much better than last time. We'll see if Link can continue to hit some more. Lizard Elder done. Nintendo with a spell shield hit. Low on mana though. Nintendo is almost no threat for standing there. Other than to block Spears. He's got to get back to farming. 13 minutes in. He's at, he's at nine stacks. Wow. For Feral Flare. 54 CS is interesting though because like he's killed things, but they just aren't actually a jungle monsters right here. It's gonna take quite some time. Blue buff now. It's gonna go to Link. Of course, coast not up. Again, earlier Dexter left part of that camp available. The blue buffs are very desynchronized here. So Shifter without the regen. Some damage in the mid lane turret, but Coast can't get the sieges to work. Seal she just poses so much threat right now. The mid lane is the battlefield, though, of course, because the side lanes have all had big turret deficits. But once the mid lane goes down, it will enable the map-wide movement of CLG to take over or the singular movement of Coast Shifter. That's why these guys are grouping up so heavily. It is the poke versus the counter engage. Nintendo, because he is still not level 11, cannot use that Nocturnal. He had to burn it defensively. And the cooldown is gargantuan for that thing. So they're really just stuck defending and trying to dodge Nidalee Spears. I'm gonna do an okay job of that. Zion Spartan again looks for the trade onto Nien, level 10 versus 9 with the item lead. You can see Zion can flex his will there to a almost 30 minion lead. I gotta say, that's pretty massive though. Coast has their own advantages they can play. CLG, of course, theirs tends to be the Siege and the Poke, yeah, but this time... Gone. That's turret. Coast get it. Yeah, double is forced to hold bottom in this one. There we go. Turrets 4 to 3, kills 3 to 1, the Dragon in 40 seconds. I really do think because of turret control and having stronger solos at this juncture, Coast does hold the cards necessary to play them well and win the game. Shifter, gonna go for that DFG, and if he can arrive while Zion Spartan fights people again and again, they could pull off their Coast split push strategy. 
COG will need to catch them within a rotation if they want to come back in this one. Well, Coast right now looking to catch in the rotation. If they wait in this brush, they could just find Aphromoo. He actually knows there's darkness. He's waiting around. Afro knows it would be death to go forward. Really smart to know that the darkness is scary. Waits now to defend the top lane turret, but Coast, all of them are there while Doublelift is in the bottom lane. This is a five versus four. How much can Coast get? Seals you in the front lines. Nian taking it up. A bit of flay damage comes through. Turret down to half HP. With Fusion taking a big javelin, though. Coast not able to keep the siege going, and Doublelift is about to claim himself a turret. Zion Spartan has so much of Coast strength right now that grouping as five is actually not a good call by them. Just seeing the level 7 Ezreal and the level 8 Nocturne is just weakness. Uh oh, Arcane Shift goes maybe not the way he was hoping. Dexter's still on the chase. Looks like he'll get rooted up. That's going to be a safe situation there. Double. Oh, don't take the wrong turn. Does not have mana, does have flash and heal. Shifter on the other side. Double if knows about this, has very few places to go. Zion Spartan gets the solo kill on CLG's AD carry. Wherever Zion is, Coast is strongest. And Double Lift, because he saw Shifter stalking him, really, he did not use his healer flash because he would have been chased down by LeBlanc anyway. That kill grants him the dragon. The control by Coast is great right now. They're finding exactly the right moves to make. There it goes. Dragon picked up, gonna be roughly the 10th stack there for Nintendo decks. You know, Riggles, heck, it gives him a ward at the very least. He's using that, <laughs> I mean, he's using that and just allowing him to, to help his team. Uh, you know, make the rotations. Yeah. Even if you're not killing jungle mobs, there's still a little bit of a GP10 out of that item. He's getting a little bit of gold. He's doing some things. Yeah. But it's really all about Zion Spartan and Shifter right now. It absolutely is. The control that they're granting. I mean, so much of that early game where CLG was trying to roam around and get advantages was Zion just soloing right now. And now that he's at his Trinity Force on Aurelia, he can make plays. The DFG has been completed by Shifter as well. They are the dynamic duo right now. Mm -hmm. and it's on the rest of Coast to let them work. I want to see if CLG can do something, though, to gum up the works. Because right. while all has been happening, there's been significant farm going on to Double Lift. Like, True. you make the comparisons, like, okay, Zion's winning, Shifter's winning, Double Lift, 127 minions, Bloodthirster's already done. He's the one who holds a lot of the split push waves. And there's also the X Factor of Nidalee. Yeah. Versus a team with no sustain. If Link gets a couple items and starts landing a few spears, it can chain into a forever siege. If Coast can ever contain Zion Spartan Shifter, that is another real possibility. So there are still plays here for CLG to win, but they are losing right now. 2300 gold puts Coast in the lead. As Skara put it, they're always winning until they lose. So we'll see if Coast can break that curse right here, though, and keep that lead throughout. Team fighting is not necessarily the best play by Coast right now, but they are feeling confident because of their four kill lead and their one turret advantage. Zion Spartan lurking around, does take a little bit of javelin to the face. Daydreaming is going to clear. There's a big wave towards the bottom. If Coast can stop the rotations, they get some pressure on the inhibitor turret. The rest of the lane's pretty much holding equal. Summoner heal just got used. Daydreaming misclicking that one. Yeah, definitely a mistake. Maybe he just wanted to be fast. Ooh. Could use that heal now. Yeah, right? Would have been handy. Well, the pink wards, though, starting to go into the jungle. Coast really trying to block off a lot of these rotations, keep their champions in the fog of war. You can see another ward right there. Coast already, like, preparing all of this. Shifter does own the blue buff, though. Coast spent some significant time to own the top jungle. They are rewarded with the blue buff still. You talked about how important Link would be. That's been shortcut a little bit with the blue steel. Yeah, it absolutely has been. Link cannot spam spears forever, and he cannot sustain to the level that CLG wants him to. Oh, Daydreaming. Gonna walk right into Dexter and Aphromoo. Hook gonna come out, land on a Zion, though. Not the ideal target. He will disengage, and Power Q comes out. Double takes a little bit of punishment as well. Wards come down on both sides. CLG's hoping to farm this one out. Get a little bit of magic resist, wait for Aurelia to equalize a little bit with Trundle. Hope to not lose too much in the process. CLG is only down 2,000 gold and does have superior team play. Just from a team perspective. Absolutely. I mean, Catalogic Gaming, right? They're sitting on a 2,000 gold deficit and keeping it there. In game one, CLG had 2,000 gold, made it 3,000 gold, made it 4,000 gold, made it 8,000 gold. And they won the game 10 minutes from this point in. Yeah. Coast taking a much slower route with this one. They have not found any picks. CLG has been very controlled to not give anything away. There's only been one turret and one dragon in the last few minutes for Coast. Mm -hmm. We'll see if and Wish Fusion is almost a non-factor right now. If Doublelift stays alive in team fights, soon he will have a very critical impact. He's just sitting on the Bloodthirster now. 
But you add to the fact Nidalee gives him attack speed, he can become an extremely potent threat later in the game. And Coast just are unwilling to siege. They had a two to three stack minion wave up there yeah. and did not even bother trying to go for that fight. Coast, very much gun shy here. Yeah, and there's been so much team roaming that Nintendo Dex will probably be worthless by the end of the game. He is at 16 stacks on his Feral Flare 20 and a half minutes into the game. It's good now because they're maintaining control of the map, but late game Nocturne that is not farmed up and does not have that strong life on hit does not do much. He will jump in and then get killed by double lift. Oof. Or just a spear. Or, or, or by, uh, yeah. Link could do it. Either one of them seems to be having the best impact. Kind of a two carry team right here for Counter Logic Gaming. Dexter actually has added a sight stone to his inventory. I know it's par for the course for Lee Sin, but in a game where you're, you know, kind of behind yeah. Coast, Coast are trying to get rid of wards as much as possible, trying to get picks from rotations with champions like LeBlanc. Getting those three extra wards down kind of consistently helps CLG make those rotations correctly without getting picked off. One really interesting thing we found when we were looking at, ooh, it's a lot of damage on a double if. Oh, the chain lands, chain Shifter. Lands. Summoner heal popped up, but there comes Aphra in the back line. Gonna keep him safe, but Summoner heal for Ignite. Yeah. That was a nice play by Shifter. Aphra came in to save. One interesting thing that we noticed, though, when we're looking at wards across regions uh, is as far as site wards purchased, North America almost purchased 50% more than Europe, but that's not because they're placing fewer wards. Uh, overall, North America buys way more tr uh, sweeping limits, and they're much more about clearing wards, so they're not placing as many wards with their trinkets in that sense. And you can see it reflected in this game, even though it's fairly early, there's seven sweeping lenses in this game already, and tons of wards trying to get cleared away. Yeah, I'm curious how much Coast is having to spend now on all these pink wards, these green wards going on, because as I briefly mentioned, right, CLG Double Sight Stone, their wards are cheaper. Like, if you keep sweeping wards forever, Coast actually loses gold. Dave oh takes big boy. damage, has to flash. Dexter flash kicks, takes him out. They're re engaged now. Zion's Barton getting collapsed on. Trophy comes out. Second kill picked up. Shift from the back line does find the kill on a double, but he is very much alone now. Trying to run away. Summoner heal by Wiz Fusion might keep him alive. The chain's coming out. The hook oh. is going to land. Shifter is going to be trying to run. No, he's going to go down. Dexter picks up another kill. Three for one, CLG. Afro move with the play right at the end. It's almost like Coast fell asleep on that one. CLG stuck together and just found the kill. The Nidalee X Factor landed the spear, followed it up. They get the kills and the dragon. What more can they get? They might get Nintendo. Looks like they will. He's got nowhere to go. Fear comes up. Oh, the flash over the wall is nice. He made his disengage. Link, one spear could turn it. Slowed down a bit. So more damage comes direction. Dangerman waiting around with the team. Link. Now forced to run away. Because this is a 3v4, might be more than they want. Yeah, but COG is rather low and they know there are more people uh -oh. on the way, including his Osmart. What can he pick up? Dives on towards Dexter. The play might just keep Dexter safe, though. Another slow comes in. The lantern as well. The root will land. Here comes Nocturne. The javelin nearly lands, but Afri will go down. Now the chase for Zion. Nian flashes the wall. He'll stay safe. One kill picked up on the back side, but. Plus one kill, plus one dragon. Ko still trying. The end slow down pops the ulti. Oh, he's caught him. Link he's will have a job. He try to be. He's, does he have mana for a spear? And he's got the turret soon. Nice pillar. Good trophy keeps the end safe. CLG though, they bring the gold back within 400. Ko's getting back whatever they can. Take another look at the way this fight started some minutes ago. It was really just a spear into Dexter, and that was enough to take him down. And then the rest of Coast, since they were trapped in that team fight without their support. Just wasn't as strong. Yes, Shifter could take double lift down in the back, but the mob of CLG moving was strong enough to get them objectives. All told after that one, gold-wise, they're back in this game, and they have shown their threat and their ability to finish kills. Some excellent play now. We're gonna see a 500 gold difference between the two. Zion Spartan one, one, and four on his Trinity Force and Giant's Belt Aurelia, so starting to go tanky. In the mid game, says, you know, I'm gonna need to stay around in team fights a bit more. There's a lot of CC you have to worry about. Dash away by Shifter. He'll stay safe. Nintendo and Dexter, both level 11. Yeah. And I know we're harping on it, but one of the big stories we had to track in this game was how long until Nintendo can transform his Feral Flare. He's still only at 19 stacks. He's four, like 80% of the way there. He needs more. Zion Spartan, they're gonna hooked into three people, and the rest of the team shows as well. The catches, CLG when they own the map, are getting killed left, right, and center. They are collapsing on these advantages. They have regained control. 
right now. And Nidalee is just now working up to her death cap. Those spears are going to be hitting even harder. There's no Soraka what? this one. Dexter just died. We're going to have to take another look at that one. But a fight breaks out. There we go. Daydreaming very, very low on health. They're re-engaged the mid lane. It's going to be the kill already on a Daydreaming. So you'll yeah, just so be finding him. A little bit of craziness happened right there, obviously. Daydreaming fell down. Nice hook. But this play over in the side. Dexter was just trying to find something. Looks like Shifter found him right through the Hex Drinker as well. Yeah, you, you proc the uh, the R mark with a maxed up rank W, yeah. and that's going to be a whole bunch of burst at once. It's going right through it. Deathfire Grass, of course, helps as well. Continue, going to kill another camp. Going to be stack number 21 here. A minute 26 in the game. We'll Just be... nowhere near what Dexter was like on Nocturne last game. It's because it's not necessarily a fault of Nintendo. It's a fault of Coast's overall strategy and CLG forcing so many lane swaps and team rotations. If if Nintendo is actually farming his jungle, CLG would have taken so many more map advantages. They forced Nintendo away from his jungle and have thus delayed his power spike. And it's worked 97 to 100 minions. Small lead for Dexter. Of course, he's doing just fine. Conservation works much better in this kind of game. Which is kind of unthinkable that a Lee Sin has more minion farm than a Nocturne. CLG has just been more rotational on the map, which is impressive considering they were pushed in for so much of this game. And so now Coast on the back foot a little bit. Zion Spartan afraid to leave the, the base, kind of, to make some plays. Twin Shadows used, do spot out CLG. And Coast say, you know, they don't want to go for it. Nian wasn't there, had TP, but no five on four. Sun goes in towards the extra big burst. Oh. Wow, Shifter one shot the, the, the guy. Side. Yeah, right, right there. CLG. Putting out the lantern. If the hook was landing afterwards, it could be a play. CLD's really just waiting for a spear to land, or a hook to land, or they're waiting for Coast to engage on them, and then they would try and disengage smartly. Well, CLG definitely been playing this game rather intelligently overall. Better damage in the end. Not going to do much. Coast still waiting around now. They're the defenders, but it's Link with a death cap, with Anathene's Unholy Grail, with the javelins. They're only going to take two from going to give up the turret right here. Bit more poke comes through. Dexter looks for the play to make in the side. Javelin not going to hit this time. In comes the wave. De Double actually puts some good damage down. down. Three hits from dead. Zion Spartan shows up. Uh -uh, Javelin to the back line. Nian got a face take this. There goes the turret. CLG, the siege is working for them. Yeah, and this is the Nidalee team versus the team with no heals and very limited magic resistance. That happened again. Yep. There he was. That was the warrior the that he died for. The sad corpse of Dexter. He had a lot of defensive capabilities as well. Merc treads, Hex Drinker, and a Giant's build. Doesn't save him from the shift. Let's see this time. Did he have any backup, or was it just him? Oh, just wanted the ward. You can't have it. Nope. Ouch. Shifter back over the wall. Dexter's got to learn his lesson. Shifter single-handedly trying to keep Coast in this game. I like some of the item choices, though, if Coast get, gets back into it. Twin Shadows picked up here. Try to get Karma into this one. Nocturne goes know. in. They're going to look for the fight. 5v4. Big Ezult. Nintendo still in the front line. Taking big damage, though. Force a disengage. Nien, though, the front line tank won't even go down. The Zion is off on the side. Looks for Nien this time around. The face of the Mountain Shield keeps him in a good spot. Javelin not quite going to land. Who is Fusion Force to run away? 5v4. Coast can't win the battle. It's all about the disengage here from CLG. They have so much of it, and they're just waiting for Coast to try and initiate. We talked about how the Nocturne initiations would be lackluster. He went all alone and did not do much other than wait for the rest of Coast to arrive. Uh-oh, and here comes the flank. Nah, -uh, it's going to be Link going back towards the mid lane. They're pushing shifter. mid lane strong because Coast was pushed away to the side lane. And it's going to be enough for the turret to go down. CLG find another advantage here. Daydreaming. Not able to get a team in this one. Zion Spartan forced to flash the hook and the trophy. Now the mid inhibitor going to be going down. A lot of cooldowns burned by Ko. CLG still very powerful. Nian in a good spot. Zion now taking a bunch of damage. Forced to run away. The hook That's is hook. going to land. Down he goes. Inhibitor in the mid lane goes. 29 and a half minutes in. Zion's advantage has been lost. CLG has neutralized it. Nian has done enough to catch up on Trundle. And CLG has regained control of this game. The inhibitor goes down. They still have Zion Spartan dead. And they can secure another objective. Wow, so Counter Logic Gaming looking so much better in this mid game there. They kind of just completely weathered that storm when they were behind in gold. Zion was big. They held their turret time after time. Dragon now going down. 4,000 gold lead to Counter Logic Gaming. Well, even given up one all game.
It is the mark of an experienced team, knowing when they are strong and when the other team is weak. They just waited out Coast. They let Zion Spartan make a mistake. They caught him in the jungle, and they found their own opportunities without ever getting engaged upon. It's part of their team composition as well. We talked about it before the game, how CLG has the team comp that will fight when they want to, but is extremely good at disengaging, and they have done just that. Coast can't find the fights that they want to, yet CLG can. That's a fresh play for these guys. Zion Spartan now just looking like mid into the mid lane. You're actually seeing that he's been donated to the farm. Shifter is waiting off on the sides. He's looking to find an opportunist to kill someone walks his way. Link just might be that person. There goes the attempt. Oh, he misses the chain. That might have been the damage to kill him because the ulti mark would have triggered. Yeah. That was popping his heal as well. Uh, now with the blue buff though, his actual middle heal will get him up to full. That was an opportunity missed by Coast. Very nearly stopped that push for another minute or so. Blue buff to Shifter. It's going to let him try more often here. Ulti's almost back up from cooldown. Death Cap going to be the next pick up there, but he's got a ways to go. Over 2,000 gold until that, guy, that item is done. Ward swept out by CLG. They're starting to own the Baron Pit. Yeah, and the Ghosts have actually just been used by Daydream, and so their scouting is done for, which means CLG with multiple pink wards to control just started. They will peel off if they see Coast going back, but this is just an insurance policy right now. If Coast doesn't check, CLG gets it. And Link right now just running interference in the mid line. It's going to be the heals coming in, keep double his damage up. He pops the ulti as well. Shifter off in the wings. Hook's going to come through. Does he find the damage? No, he does not. Baron picked up by CLG. Nintendo forced a flash. One hit from dead, though. Can he get himself out of this one? Flash oh, javelin oh. actually hits him. Nintendo goes down. I wonder if CLG tries to power play this straight through the mid lane. They do have a 5v4. They do have super minions up, but they have a giant wave in the top lane as well. And just like game one, they're going for all the turrets. And they're look now. The top lane is going to be going down rather quickly. Minions have already claimed all those defending coast minions. 20 seconds of five versus four CLG. Going to have the chance to push Shifter. Forced to disengage over the wall. His cooldowns are down now. Ian happy to face tank this one. This turret will fall rather shortly. 5v3 for a short time. That is going to go down. An inhibitor likely to follow suit. Counterlogic Gaming now with two inhibitors dead and a Baron buff. What else can they grab? Yeah, this is the question. They almost grabbed a Daydreamer with one hook. And Fusion gets solo. CLG might go for Nexus turret damage. It is slightly risky, but they got to be feeling confident after this great comeback. Gigantic clump of minions are there. Zion Spartan gets kicked back into the team. He's going to be taking so much pain down. He goes Shifter. Also worth disengaged. Zion actually gets away on fire. But turret number one, turret number two going down. Counter Logic Gaming. There goes the Got to make it 2-0. 33 minute game to follow the 30 minute game one. Convincing quarterfinal for Counter Logic Gaming. And this means they move on to play TSM in the semifinals tomorrow, which will be a matchup for the ages. But even so, this game against Coast, they were tested a little bit early on. They did not have strong tactical movements early, but boy, did they have them late. Late landed many spears, Dexter initiated properly. Got picked off a few times by Shifter. Yeah. But all told, they stuck together, they got past their nerves, and CLG as an organization wins their first LCS quarterfinal ever. And they made it. They made it up there under the top four. Of course, guaranteed their LCS spot with that one. They're two series away for a trip to the All-Star Invitational in Paris in a couple of weeks. And yeah, everybody I feel like stepped up so well in this one.